Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. I did a video a few days ago on SQL 2017 and I took you through how to install it and you know looking at all the individual components like uh, management studio and reporting services and so on. And you know, you guys came back to me, my loyal fan base, and said, you know, hey Rich, you know, that was a really, really good video. And you've given all these tips on how to detect SQL through um, SCCM to install it, but you know, you haven't actually shown us how to deploy SQL through SCCM. And I guess that's the purposes behind today's video is to actually go through on on uh, how to uh, uh, build the packages, how to deploy them to collections, and we're actually going to drop a test machine into that collection so we can actually see that installation going ahead. And really, it's kind of a video that will uh, let you uh, understand the SCCM software deployment method. Um, it's a good way of learning SCCM by actually by by example and by going through and you know installing a useful piece of software and actually take it through all the individual steps on how it's done and that's what we're going to do today so without further ado let's see how it's done so here we have we're, well we're over at our sccm box so I'm going to assume that you already have Configuration Manager installed. I'm not going to take you through the whole uh, how to build a server, how to install SCCM, because I've done videos on that before. And, you know, it's quite funny, really, because, you know, some people say, my God, this is actually the first time you're jumping straight into software and not showing us how to build the operating system. Well, it's a difficult one to gauge because it's hard to gauge your audience. You know, when I've done when I've done videos before and I've jumped straight into the software and said, right, this is what you do, and this, you know, this is how you set it up and so on. People say, Well, how did you get there? It's like, well, I built a VM and installed a server on it. I was like, Well, how'd you do that? And it's like, really? So that's kind of the purposes why some of my videos I tend to start from the very beginning. But with this particular video, we're going to assume that you already have SCCM installed and you've got, you know, all your boundaries set up and and you got your distribution point role installed and your management point role installed and everything is functioning and happy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the software library. Now under application management and under applications, we are going to package SQL 2017. And hey, that's why you're here. Let's 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 get it done. Let's stop chatting about it. Let's get it done. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and create a new application now because we are installing this as an executable rather than msi i'm going to go for a manual installation so hit next now i'm going to give it a name so we call it ms sql 2017 now you can fill out all these bits and pieces in your own time uh, publisher is Microsoft Woohoo! Um, version 14. Uh, we're going to give it a published date of today. Now, you can also give it a, a, an application category. Now, this allows your users to find applications when they're looking for them inside the software center. So I'm going to give it a, a category of databases, which is one I've already created. Uh, if not, then you can just create your, your own. You can call it whatever you like. So hit next. Now this is where we set various details about the application. So you can put in, say, the URL to the SQL homepage, and this will provide links and data for the user when they're on the software center. Um, so Keywords, this is how users would find your application in the software center. So assume you have 300 applications in there. How They're not going to browse through you know, a list of 300 apps. So we use keywords to, to drill that down. So I'm going to use SQL, comma, and SQL 2017. It's probably uh, a good place to start. So if we type in SQL, it will show us 
basically everything that's SQL, so SQL 2012, 14, 16, and so on, or we can highlight it down. We can give it a pretty little icon. Um, now remember guys, the icons are restricted to 250 by 250, which is very, very annoying. Um, as most icons are 256 by 256. So nine times out of 10, I've got to grab an icon file and then shrink it down in paint and make it 250 um, before I get a pretty little icon. So that I really do wish that they would improve increase the resolution slightly on icons to at least match the industry standard of 256 by 256. Um, I've not got any icons to hand, um, but that's basically what you would do there. So, I mean, it's not particularly, it's not a featured app. I'm not going to highlight it or anything like that, so I'm not going to tick that box. Hit next. Now, this is where the magic happens. So, this is all the different ways that we can install, depending upon environmental settings and so on. Now, we are going to be uh, setting up as a script installer. So we haven't got an MSI. Uh, obviously, the MSI contains all the details about how to install an application. We haven't got that here. We've just got a standard uh, executable installation, which is following a configuration file. Now, that configuration file is what we created in the previous video. So if you are lost on what I'm saying, then go back to my previous videos and you it will go through how to install uh, SQL and how to actually create and customize that configuration file we're about to use. So hit next. So we'll give it uh, a name. So we'll call it Silence Installer SQL 17. Give it a language. Oh, how many versions of English could there possibly be? <clears throat> English United Kingdom. Hit next. Now, what I've already done is I've already copied the installation files onto a share that SCCM has access to. Now, this is uh, what we created in the previous video. So we have SQL 17 here. We have the configuration file that we created, and this basically goes through on how to install. So what we're going to do is this has to be a URL, not URL, sorry. This has to be a network share. So browse to network share and select the folder. So that's where you're going to be installing it from. Here is the setup file. So let's go back into that folder. Now we're going to be running set, uh, setup.exe with that configuration file. So we're going to use in setup.exe um, the configuration on installing it with the file um, is there. So we've used that file. I'm giving it on the end, just in case I didn't type it, no, no. Um, we could also create uh, an uninstallation. So if we had a configuration file that went through uninstalling, that's where we would do it there. So in the config file, we've got action install. You could put uninstall. So you create another file. In fact, let's do it.
And there you go. So that gives the user the option to remove it. Now, detection method. This is what I was talking about in the previous video. So, SCCM hasn't got a clue what you're installing or if it even worked. So we go through detection methods. Now, the best method I've always used is registry. Um, or you could look for the presence of a file or a folder or so on to see if something's installed. That tends not to be too reliable because you could have a piece of software um, that has been uninstalled but has left folders behind. And therefore, SCCM will then think, actually, this application is still installed. So I tend not to use that. Um, registry is... I mean, you know, you, you, you could use multiple methods. You could use a file as well as registry. But I tend to use the registry um, as a, a good starting point. Now, uh, I haven't got um, SQL 17 installed, and I don't think my SQL 17 box is started. So I can't browse to the machine to get the exact key, but I do know what the key is, so I'll just type it in. Um, so we know it's SQL Server, and then we know it's 130. I'm going to stop there, because it's not 130. It's 140. And we know it's 2017. Now the key we're looking for is current version. And if you actually browse to your box, uh, look at the registry key, and you, under current version, that is a version, the key that we're looking for is 14.0.1000.169. So if that key exists, and that it holds that value, then the base version of SQL is installed. If this was a service pack for SQL, then you would be looking for this key as well as uh, the serviceability keys. Um, and the reason for doing that is when you install SQL and then you install a SQL service pack on top, it can get itself into a bit of a tiz. And what actually happens is if you then install service pack one, it'll say, oh, how, oh hold on, SQL's not installed. And it'll try to install SQL again. So you need to look for both keys um, with service packs. So you need to be more careful with that. I'll show you that in a second once I've finished doing this. So uh, hit next. We want to install it for the system and we want to install it regardless of anybody logged in um, so that when we deploy it as administrators to the machine, we know it's going to install in the background. Uh, give it a sensible time to install, so probably about 25 minutes, um, even though it installs in about 10. Uh, I always tend to go a little bit higher. So hit next. Um, requirements. Uh, this is where you would basically say uh, only install if you have, you know, so much memory or so much hard drive space and so on. So we could say disk space uh, on the C drive, which is where you're installing to. So let's say only install SQL 17 if you have more than four gig of disk space, because you don't want to deploy it if you've got no disk space. And you've got various rules around that. So you could say, make sure we have uh, the server has at least four gig of RAM or eight gig of RAM, say for example. Yeah. Um, so you're actually setting the environment that SQL is being installed into. Now, dependencies. For SQL 17 on its own, we have no dependencies. Um, but if you was doing, say, a service pack, um, because the application evaluation for SCCM is done in not in any specific order, 
SCCM can look at service packs and applications and .NET and all sorts um, in completely random orders. So it'll say, right, I'm going to I'm going to go off and I'm going to install Service Pack One for SQL Seventeen, without actually having SQL installed on the box, which causes a mass failure. So what you would do here is you would say this is, for example, if it was a Service Pack. So we're talking future now. <clears throat> we would say. As an example, so we say do not install SQL unless this was installed. So, as an example, if you're if you're installing SQL 17's service pack, the dependency would be SQL itself. So it says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa I'm not going to install a service pack here because SQL's not installed." And it'll then go off and then install. SQL first, and then when it comes around to evaluating the service pack, it'll say, oh, yeah, SQL's installed. Let's go ahead and install it. So that's the purposes behind that. I'll show you um, in a minute once we've finished creating uh, this one. So I hit next to finish it off, summary, and then wait for it to actually process that application. Right, and that's done. So let me just go to a service pack and I'll show you what I mean on those other, um, you know, like the de uh, dependencies and so on. So if we look at this one, for example, if we look at the dependencies on SQL 16 service pack one has a dependency of SQL. So what we're saying is, Install SQL first. I've actually got automatic install off no, but you would just put a little tick in that box. I don't know why I've got that actually. Um, it should be automatic install. Um, so that's what I was referring to there. So now we've got this package. What do we do with it now? How do we get it? How do we get it to the server that we actually want? Well, the first thing we need to do is uh, distribute the software. So we go to distribute content. Now, say, say for example, this is uh, you want to deploy it out to uh, a machine in another country or uh, you know somewhere else. You would have a deployment point that is local to that office a server that is close by and that is what you are doing you are copying the application from the share actually to the location of where you're installing it so not actually to the machine it's where sccm has a local copy so if you was installing it in france you wouldn't be pulling it all the way from the uk uh, all the way from the uk over to france you would have a server locally in france sitting there in the in the comms room somewhere uh, and that is where you'd be copying it to so let's bring up a distribution point now i've only got one now depending upon the speeds of your links and so forth um this can take a while uh, and as you can see it's gone yellow which means it's in progress um, so while it's in progress, it's now going through and sending it off to that distribution point, which for me is actually um, just a completely different VM inside the same hypervisor. So it shouldn't take too long. Um, but while that's running, what we'll do is we will deploy it. So what we're doing here, how do we get the application to actually, to, to a user, or how do we get the application to a set of machines? So you can deploy software to Pacific users. You can deploy software to Pacific servers. So what we do now is we say deploy. And we say we put it out to a collection. So you can also say put it out to a user. 
So we are going to put it into our applications testing collection. This is a collection that I've created, which doesn't have any members. Um, but what I'm saying is anybody that is part of this collection will receive the software or at least have the ability to install this software. So that's what we're saying. So we're saying, we, yes, that's fine. Thank you very much. Yes, it doesn't contain anybody yet because we will add it in a minute. Um, automatically distribute, so say next. This is effectively the same as what I've already just done. So it's just saying, look, you're deploying it, make sure you distribute it as well. I did it separately, but you can do it as part of the deployment. Um, now, what we're saying here is, are we going to install it? Are we going to uninstall it? Um, well, we want to install it. Available and required. So what's what does this mean? If we make an application available, it means when you go into the software center, you can actually go off and select it. If you set it to required, it forcefully installs that software, whether you want it or not. So this is great if you're building machines and you've got a set list of applications to deploy um, and you want them to install in the background as unattended installations, this is what you would do as required. So we can pre-deploy it. You can even wake up the machine as well in case it's asleep. Um, and you can also determine whether it will receive it on a slow link or not, or any links that have got costs and so on. I'm not particularly interested in that. I'm saying here that the software is available at any time. Uh, and I also want to install the software outside of um, maintenance windows. So I, I basically saying here, I want to install the software, whether I like it or not, day or night. Uh, not particularly bothered. I'm not using SCOM in this in my test environment, so I'm not uh, going to be doing it here. Um, but this will, you can raise a SCOM alert, um, which is operations manager for those that are saying what the hell SCOM is. Uh, you can basically generate an alert to say, look, this has failed. Um, if you wanted. <clears throat> so hit next, hit next. Uh, and then it will then deploy that application is it finished? Nope. So let's go to that collection. So under device collections, we have applications testing collection. So if we go to the deployments tab, here we can see all of the applications that we have deployed that are available. And there is our SQL 17 as a required installation. So we're saying you will install this. All these are available. Um, actually, what I should be doing is not, because I want to show you guys. Um, that's interesting, I can't change it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we've got a test machine uh, here, 16 app deploy. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this in that collection. So add selected collection, add selected items. And then we're going to select the collection that we've just put the software out to. So if we go back in now, refresh. There you go, bit slow. Um, one. So what we're saying is this machine here is part of that collection. So whatever is available in here will now be available to that machine. So if we switch over, now this is not going to work yet because the software is not deployed. Yeah, you see it's still deploying. But if we go over to our box, this is where we're sending the software to. So if we load up the software manager,
we have absolutely nothing, which is expected because we've only just put the machine into the collection. Now to save time, I'm gonna force it to evaluate. So what we can do is if we go into the um, control panel, you have, if you type it properly, configuration manager. This is basically uh, another section to the software center. And what we can do is we can go to actions and we can force a full policy retrieval. And what that'll do is that'll force the SCCM client to go off and say, look, what have I got? You know, you've just been dropped into a collection. What have you got available to me? So we'll come back in a minute when that is fully populated. Right, so a few minutes have passed. Well, actually about 10 minutes have passed. Um, and we've got our applications here. So checking back at our server, we can see it's green, so it's deployed. So everything's okay from that perspective. Uh, going back to our server, it's now sitting in a download state. So it is actually now uh, downloading it um, and installing it. Because we'd set it to require, it's doing it itself. Now, obviously, this will take time to run through, and we'll come back when it's done. So as we can see there, Scenario Engine's kicked straight in. It's now installing. And in around 10 minutes or so, we should have a fully installed version of SQL 2007. No, we're not. It's found. So it just goes to show, it doesn't matter how much preparation you do, things always go wrong. So it actually brings me round to part two of how to diagnose an application that hasn't installed properly on SCCM, which is completely unplanned and unscripted. So let's try and find out what went wrong. So in my computer inside Windows, the default locations for SCCM is SCCM cache. That is where our software is kept. So we can see everything is in there. Um, what we can also look at is the uh, log. So inside CCM logs, there is a text file called App Enforce. And this shows exactly what SCCM is trying to execute and also the return code of why it failed. So we're getting a code of 214, blah, blah, blah. So we were looking for a code zero. That's a successful install. Something's gone wrong. This is a fresh deployment of a server. So it could be something's missing. So what we can do is if we get to that and we run it manually from within the CCM cache folder, Without the silent installation, we should be able to figure out why it's failed. So if we bring up a command prompt, and run it manually, I suspect there'll be something wrong on the server. Now, this obviously, this isn't a fault with SCCM. It is a fault with the application itself. So something's missing, a prerequisite, and so on. So let's try and figure out how or why this has failed. So we'll let this run through and find out what the fault is. So we'll let that run through. And the default is actually with my own configuration file. It was simply moaning about um, in the previous video, we'd installed it on a server that wasn't domain joined. So all it's complaining about really is the fact that the configuration file has a user here. 
which is actually not relevant for this particular build, we would be using a domain um, admin account. So I can go off and amend this, um, redistribute the package, and hopefully it should install correctly. So after the minor hiccup on the configuration file, which is to be expected, we can see that the installation is, is going ahead now and um, it should be installed okay. So once it's finished, it'll then give you the error code and of zero and the software center will then say that the software is installed. So we will come back when it's all done. So as we can see, that is now installed. Now I had to make some slight amendments to the registry key of the application under the detection type my uh, registry key for detecting in the registry was uh, was actually missing. Um, it was actually a version, current version, um, and that was causing a, a, an error as well. But other than that, it was a straightforward installation and it's also worked. Now, just to cover a point that I made earlier, because we had to make a change to the source, uh, so let's say, for example, let's open this up. And for example, I had a couple of faults in my file for whatever reason. Um, so I was, oops, I was writing out to a drive that doesn't exist, was one of the faults. And it was also a particular user that doesn't exist, which is an easy mistake to make. But so let's say you save that, you made changes to that. Now, how do you send those changes back out to the distribution point? So, what you need to do is go over to deployment types, and then if you right click on it, and then say update content. And then what that will do is that will then send out the changes that you've made out to your distribution points. Now obviously that takes time to, to come out, but those changes that you've made will then be um, deployed. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope uh, you found it informative. Uh, a few hiccups in the way, but it's all good because it's, that's how we we learn. I hope you really, really enjoyed the video and uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, like and subscribe for more content. Until next time, see you later.